Uh, I think playing at home. Uh, it's just such a cool environment, you know, having only been here going to my second year. It's just such a cool environment. Uh, our fans, the 12s, the way they get after it, the noise. Um, again, I said this last year, it's, it's nice to be on the other side. You know, when you're actually calling plays and it's quiet, and you're not dealing with the crowd noise. I'm used to it being the other way. So um, that's a big part of it. And then just, you know, seeing all the hard work these guys have put in and uh, how it carries over. Can you measure how much further the offense is? One this year compared to last year? Uh, yeah, tremendous. I mean, I can't put a percentage on it, but it's tremendous. Um, just, again, the knowledge, the awareness. Uh, certainly there's some young players, but, you know, basically the offensive line is pretty much uh, intact. Um, having Russ back, having the backs, you know, Rashad and Chris and uh, CJ with another year, it's, uh, we're, we're light years ahead of where we were last year. And, um, Again, I think you saw some of that in the preseason when the ones played. And, uh, but again, you still got to go out and do it. So uh, thrilled with where we are, and uh, it'd be a good challenge going against the Bengals. Pete was saying, was saying this, is, this is the best he's ever seen Russ in his career at this point. It's, obviously, you weren't there his whole career, but just from what you've seen in camp in the preseason, how well is he playing? Uh, playing really well. Uh, the confidence is there. Again, I think year two in the system helps. Um, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't have to think with some of the new concepts or some of the new checks and things that we do. It just kind of happens for him naturally. Uh, you know, we get so much work during training camp with those guys. I mean, he, you know, he, he gets a ton of the work and um, he's just in a really good spot, very comfortable, playing really well. Um, and uh, uh, I think if you asked him, he'll feel the same way. How many more ideas or even plays do you have for him now that you had a whole year with him? We always try to evolve, but I, I wouldn't. I mean, we've we've tweaked some things for sure. We've added a few wrinkles, um, but really, it's more about us kind of doing what we do and then trying to window dress it. And then, of course, you game plan and you try to find things. But uh, I'd say there's probably anywhere from 15 to 30 things throughout the off season that we at least tossed around. You know, how many of them stuck? I don't know. Um, but we're always looking for ways to evolve, ways to use Russ and. Uh, uh, we certainly haven't shown everything in the preseason, but uh, we've also played and, and done a lot of our stuff. As much as you wanted to get Jerron more involved in the offense this year, was that nervous at all when, you know, when he was sort of out there on side? It was. Uh, it was, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's today's day and age how you build rosters, and uh, I think the way I feel about Jerron, I just I trust him. I think he's a really good player. Uh, I have a great relationship with him, so uh, I was nervous. But then uh, I was the first one, I think, if not the first, the second, to hug him when he came back in the building. So uh, he's going to have a great year. Um, again, just everything he does for us is uh, unquestioned, and you can't always show up in the stat column. But there's things that he does for us that you know uh, we, as a staff, the other players notice. How is Tyler grown as the number one receiver from the spring to you know? Week one, you know, coming Sunday, how, how have you kind of seen him progress in that role? Um, you know, Tyler's always been very consistent. You know, I don't know if I've seen a lot of growth other than the comfort level. He actually grabbed me walking in. We were talking about a, a concept that he actually knows better than I know from not being here for the past seven years. And he was asking me, he wanted to talk a little bit more about it. So uh, I think he's just very comfortable uh, with, again, the system. He's comfortable with me. I mean, for him to walk off the field and be, hey, shot, I want to ask you about this after, uh, shows you where he's at. Very confident, had a great day today. Um, so he's very comfortable in that role. I think it's something that he's waited for and wanted. And uh, again, uh, we're excited to kind of throw him out there and, and watch him perform again. How comfortable do you feel with the young guys right now? Because outside of Jerron and Tyler, it's still a pretty, pretty young sure. group, even with Malik, who's Played a game or two with you, but that group as a whole, where they've come to, how do you kind of feel where where they're at? Um, that's a great question. I think you know uh, we trust them. Uh, they know the playbook. It's certainly um, uh, there's things that they think more than the other guys do. The other guys react. These guys have to think more. I mean, they just it's just part of the deal because they're trying to be perfect, right? They're trying to get the exact split, the exact depth of the route. So there's a lot of things going through their mind that maybe allows them to not play as fast as some of the veteran guys. But we trust them and. Uh, uh, Russ isn't going to check up, you know, with whoever's in the game. I won't check up for calling plays um, because, again, they've, they've earned that. Will there be growing pains? Sure. There's going to be growing pains. That's all part of it. Um, but uh, I think they're talented enough that whatever the growing pains are, we'll overcome that as well. How about DK specifically? We were just talking to him. He said he's 100% ready to go, all that. But you only got to see him in, like, what happened with the season game early. I mean, where do you feel like where he is and how much is? Yeah, again, I, I feel good. It's been good to see him work these last couple of days because he really hasn't worked for, you know, what, the last two weeks or whatever. Um, I think he's in a good spot. Um, again, all those guys, um, again, I feel very comfortable with where they are mentally, but you still got the transition into 
the NFL a real game. Like the tempo will be different for those guys, uh, especially the guys that played in the second half of some of those preseason games. <laughs> the tempo is going to be a little different. We actually had a good on good period today, and uh, we we're going against the defense. And Russ kind of threw a little skinny post to DK, and it got on him really fast. And he just it, he turned his head around and hit him in the hand and kind of fell to the ground. He wasn't quite ready for it. The cool thing for that is now he knows that that's really the closest we can get to game days when we go against Bobby and, and KJ and those guys on defense. So it was really a cool rep for him. And uh, again, he made a great play later on in the practice off a similar type timing thing. So um, again, uh, we think they'll play very well. Will there be growing pains? For sure. I think he's in a good spot and uh, we'll see how he plays. When he had surgery August 20th, you write, in your mind write him off as he won't be there? For the no, I would never do that. Uh, I think I'm thrilled that he's back. Uh, if you asked me then if he'd be back, I didn't know just because I didn't know him that well. And uh, he's worked tremendously hard and I think that's a testament to him. So um, it uh, uh, there'll be some uh, Nerves, I'm sure, early on in the game for all those guys, for all of us, really. I mean, shoot, however many years it is for me, I still get nervous going in the opening game, the excitement of it. Um, but uh, to say he's back is really good for us. Today, Russell characterized his relationship with you as extremely close. How has that kind of evolved and grown over these last year plus? Um, you know, I've always, uh, I've always tried to have close relationships with the guys I've coached, not just the quarterbacks. I spend the most time with them. Um, but I would say Russ is one of the easiest guys it's been to get to know. He's just such a gracious person. He's just such a great uh, personality and person and so giving. Um, and I think we kind of intersected at the right time, if you will. Um, I had a chance for two years as a quarterback coach to kind of go back and think about maybe things I would do differently and okay, hey, this would happen. I think, you know, he was okay, I'm going to, they're changing coordinators. Let me see how this is going to play out. So I think it was really good timing. We just hit it off really fast and uh, we see football the same way. It uh, doesn't mean we agree on everything, but, um, and then I think having gone through last year and seeing him just how poised he is throughout the course of a game, uh, that's really impressive. So, um, uh, terrific young man, really a good friend, um, and uh, it was an easy relationship to get started. How did he grade out as an offensive coordinator? Uh, well, if you ask him, uh, he did great. Now, I like to say that, yeah, you had a touchdown pass, but you also got Geno knocked out of the game, you know, so it's really not that easy of a thing to do. I mean, if he wants to take credit for the one play, uh, but he did good. It was fun. Uh, we had done that before in New York. I uh, went to Pete about it. He was, uh, Russ was really excited about it. Um, they don't let me run on the field in the end zone like he did, you know, when they threw the touchdown to uh, Jacob. Uh, it'd be cool. I think we'd get a, a penalty. But he did a good job. And that shows you where he's grown and kind of how much more comfortable he is now. And um, so uh, it was fun to see him compete in that realm. How instructive is it to, to, to be on that end of it, just for, even for that little bit of time? To, to know well, if you ask there. him, he, uh, he was actually caught off guard with how much commotion goes on there. I've always said if, if you guys could listen into all the conversations that we have on the headset, the things that are said and even just talked about, and um, I think he was uh, caught off guard with that. But again, just understanding the communication of what's going on from the press box down to the sidelines, uh, how fast everything has to happen. Like when you're out in the huddle, you're kind of communicating with your guys, and then I'm giving him the play. Here he's got the play clock running down. A couple times I'll, I'll rat on him. One time he called a screen. He called it the wrong way. We had to fix it. Uh, but he really did a good job. He, he really, really did a good job. And um, But I think he uh, would like for me to call it, and then if he doesn't like it, he'll just make an adjustment at the line of scrimmage. When you're in the head from the headsets, do you give Wilson a chance to to process before that clock, before the 15 stops? Are you talking to him the whole time until it cuts off? It all, it all depends on the call. Um, there's always little reminders, like there's certain plays that you want to give them reminders, like, hey, make sure you move Tyler to this, or hey, do this, or hey, here's the check. Um, so that's why the quicker you can get the call in, you can communicate a little bit longer. You've got, obviously, alerts coming from upstairs about defensive personnel. So it depends. If they're short calls that are pretty basic, you know, you might not, you know, be on quite as long as you would be with longer calls or plays that have more more alerts. When you go and hurry up, do you ever use that 15 second cutoff to advantage where you get in formation? Rich Gannon and the Raiders used to do this all the time. Part of the reason they led the league in offense that year is they got in formation, saw the defense set up before 15 seconds and Tressman's still talking to them. Yeah, I think everybody does that to a point. Um, I'm a little bit more of the you know belief that hey Russ we we train Russ during the week hey here's kind of what we're looking for, um, but everybody has it to a point so yes we do have it we use it some depends some weeks it's it's probably more beneficial than others but um, 
uh, there's something to it. And that's why, again, some of the tempo teams, they like to get to the line of scrimmage. They can kind of see what the defense is doing. With, with the running backs, do you have a thought of how you want to try to, I mean, is there an ideal percentage between Chris and Rashad and even getting CJ kind of into the mix, how you do that? <laughs> you know, that's, that's a hard thing to predict. I mean, you know, again, we just kind of got to see how the game goes. I mean, we obviously want to get uh, both, you know, Chris and, and Rashad going and get them touches, but depends on the game. Are we going to have 85 plays? Are we going to have 55 plays? It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, it's something we really feel good about that we can adjust based on the move. But you're going you're gonna to see them all early. And um, you know, CJ is certainly very capable as well. So, um, and we want to keep, we want to play multiple guys. When you're game playing for a team that has two edge rushers that are really good, like, the game players, what does that do to an offense when it's not just one elite guy you got to keep going? Uh, it's, pro it's problems um, just because it's hard to chip on both sides or protect on both sides. There's ways you can do it, but um, it is a problem. Um, the good news is when you have pretty good tackles that you trust, like we do with Dwayne and Jermaine, it certainly helps. Uh, but uh, they look uh, they look pretty good out there. It's uh, fun to kind of watch. What did you think of Andrew Luck retiring as somebody who coached him? Yeah, um, you know, I think it was one of those situations where I was certainly surprised. Um, I just I want what's best for him. Um, really enjoyed my time with him. Uh, he certainly has his reasons. I haven't talked to him, so I certainly don't know what those reasons were, but uh, he was good for the game of football. Uh, I enjoyed my time with him, and again, uh, I was with him when he was beat up and having to get rehab and work, and uh, it's a very taxing position to play. And uh, I just wish him the best, and I know he'll, he'll do great things uh, beyond football. Well, Russell and Pete kind of made it sound like 70% completion percentage was was the goal this year? I mean, do you feel like that's attainable? Do you feel like that's a good barometer for a successful quarterback and a successful offense, or is that just kind of going to be a byproduct? Uh, I think that's always a number you're going to shoot for. I mean, I think you've seen guys the last couple of years. It's, there's there's multiple guys kind of hitting that that number. Um, it's always a good target. Again, each week will be different, but Russell certainly has the ability to do that. There's no question about that. Um, you know, we tend to sometimes throw the ball downfield a little bit more than some of these other teams that you know drop it off underneath. But um, if he was at 60 percent or 70 percent, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Andrew Luck, as you know him, do you think retirement's forever? Do you think he'll never say no? I, I don't know. I think Andrews. I'm sure he thought this thing very well, uh, well out. Was very thorough with it. Um, Nothing surprises me anymore, but uh, uh, he doesn't do much without thinking about it pretty thoroughly. Anything else? Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank